you guys back on the crypto stuff um somebody said there's nothing more fake or scammy than crypto and icos etc well first thing i want to say is one of the things i mentioned how do, can you tell how many coins tokens are generated <clears throat> firstly they've got a fixed amount for example bitcoin has 21 million they're mining the blocks they know how many blocks there are you can read the number of blocks on the ledger you can see how much is on there you can see who owns it <clears throat> because you have wallet addresses so for example mount gox which was a um, exchange that went bust they still sit on about two billion dollars worth of crypto they want to liquidate theirs because obviously it's gone to receivership we actually have a list of where all their bitcoin and bitcoin cash is because when they move it to the market it can dip the market because it suppresses it because it sells at a peak. So the reality is you can see when people are putting money in there and you can identify their wallets through the amounts that are in there and the movements on it. That's why there's now this drive for privacy coins because these coins, you can see them. You can see the movement of cash. You can see if they're withdrawn. So for example, if it went from a Bitcoin wallet into Coinbase and then out through the Coinbase system, you'd have a trail that takes it back to fiat and if it goes through Coinbase, it also has the bank account that's associated with the money being withdrawn. Simple as that. Um, now, <clears throat> the thing with this, I'll explain why, because the first thing is it's got limited supply in that sense. Now, not all crypto has limited supply, but there is different types of crypto out there, but Bitcoin is a currency in the sense that it is used in a trading sense. It's used in the same way money would be used. Um, somebody already mentioned, oh, you couldn't buy a gallon of milk with it. And what? You could buy a gallon of milk, but the, the reality is you can buy a gallon of milk with money in Venezuela right now. Well, you could, but it's more than a month's salary. Um, the point being is that if there was a drive to do that with the Bitcoin, it would already be occurring. There is other coins that are looking to be at that level financially where it will be used for pretty much everything. I think Bitcoin doesn't have the ability to be able to use at that level for everything. You know, then the day is, is quite happy. It's, like, it's equivalent to trading 500 euro notes. At the end of the day, if you're doing it in pennies, it would take forever. But if you're doing it in 500 euro notes, it makes sense. So I'd say the thing with the Bitcoin is the equivalent of just trading 500 euro notes, bigger amounts. Where if you want the smaller amounts, there is other coins already focusing on that right now. I can't see Bitcoin in the near future being able to buy a gallon of milk or whatever. Um, you've also got to understand that overlaps into the tax system and everything else, which is something that will take time to combat. Um, but I want to focus on the value because when you say everything's fake, it's a scam, da da da. The ICO I'm putting together at the moment, and I'm not marketing this on here by the way, it's, I just want to talk about the legitimacy of it and how it works. First thing is, we've already had two news articles on German TV for a plant that we already have working, where we make power and diesel from old tires and all that unrenewable plastic. We turn it into power. With those, they are expensive to set up, but they are always quick on it. And one of the things we're actually negotiating at the moment, well, sorry, not negotiating. We actually have a 20 minute slot in a conference in Latin America um, for a lot of the countries there that actually would benefit severely from this because of power shortages and the amount of waste that is either generated there or ends up there. Um, so we got that going on, but how does this project work? The first thing is, Unlike other ICOs, I can actually call them securities. I can actually tell you how money is going to be generated because the business is not sat in these legality issues in the sense that I'm not sat in America. I'm not sat where this is 
in a legal problem. Um, what you've got is you buy tokens in the business. So what, what would happen is you buy, you go into say Coinbase, you bought a Ethereum, you bought um, Bitcoin, you then buy our tokens off us directly. We give you the tokens in exchange for your Bitcoin Ethereum. As the slots allocate in the sense that most ICOs will have like this timeline where they're just looking at money raised, this like what they call a soft and a hard cap, which basically means this will make their business function, which is a soft cap, hard cap is what they would love, you know, at the end of the day. But ultimately they only need this bit. With our venture, it's split up into sections. The reason being, each section is a power plant. And as the amounts are raised, basically the orders are placed because we actually sell our Ethereum, we sell our Bitcoin and order the power plants. Now, why that's slightly different is the fact is you'll be able to actually see the transactions going on. We'll be able to see that 1 million raised, power plant ordered. And we'll quite happily show some of the information relating to that as well to show it's been the purchase has taken place. The other side is when you get those tokens, I've been looking at how to encourage people to keep hold of them because I'm not too fussed. I don't really want them traded in and out of the markets constantly causing this sort of effect. Because obviously as a main stakeholder in the business, I don't really want people devaluing the coins, which sometimes happens. Oh, sorry, tokens devalue, especially when it's going new to market in the sense that here's a prime example. We go to an exchange and people start selling because we haven't got anything to deliver yet. They ignore the fact that during the time period here, uh, well, before the launch, because the, the, the camera's back to front, uh, before the launch, we'd actually place those orders for the power plants. Power plants take six months for manufacture. And then when they're delivered, we've got another two, three weeks of modernization and customizing to get what we want. So in reality, you're looking at seven months before the first plant produces, but you may actually find if the ICO goes well, well, we should have at least four in one batch so that when they do switch on, that we're switching on multiple at the same time. <clears throat> Point being, the tokens will be set up to declare dividends every three months once the plants start producing. And what I'm looking at is eight power plants initially. Four power plants will be declaring dividends every three months and four plants will, the money will be reinvested to buy more power plants. The whole point is the first batch of dividends will increase by year two, because although this is like say eight to start with, well, by year two, it's actually 10 plants, which means now the first batch is not four plants, it's five. And then the other one's actually increasing the plants faster. So by year three, you're not getting them out of five, you're getting them out of seven or eight. You know, it's increasing on the amount of plants. Now, what's slightly different is, which is why I'm sort of talking with the team at the moment, is because we, the business model is based on a lot of the stuff coming in through fiat anyway, because we get things like the, the, the money for tire disposal, waste plastic disposal, um, selling the diesel, selling the electric, selling the black carbon, selling the, the metal recovered from the tires. We actually have a lot of fiat. We can actually go to the exchange, buy up Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then give it to the shareholders. And that's basically it. So the point is you then get your Bitcoin, Ethereum, and you're not looking at me selling you more tokens, which is what somebody brought up earlier about that you can just keep producing tokens if you wanted to. A lot of time you can't anyway. It's, people can see this stuff. Um, the limited supply and stuff, if you look at coin market cap, you can see the limited supply of people's tokens and coins anyway. Um, but the point being is, if you started liquidating and adding more and more to devalue something, you devalue your own business because at the end of the day, people just walk away from it. <clears throat> so that argument is not correct. But the, the reason I'm doing it this way, which is a little bit different from other ICOs, is I want to protect the tokens. The tokens are going to go up in value anyway. 
they don't need the same liquidity of going backwards and forwards in the trading. Or, I'd much rather have a stable amount and then say you got whatever your investment is, first quarter you got $500. Second quarter, there's some more power plants come online, you get $700. Then you get 700 in the next one. Then more power plants come online, you get 900. Then some more come online, you get 1200. The whole point is you're getting it because you hold those tokens. Because it's not because you're holding Ethereum, it's not because you're holding Bitcoin, it's because the value of the power plants is increasing because it's fiat uh, circulation and power usage and generation has increased. And as such, the whole business enterprise expands and with it, the token value increases. And yes, it's limited. There's no benefit to me to add another, like say I generate 20 million tokens, there's no benefit to me to add 20 million more. If anything, you want scarcity because as a business owner, I actually, as my team, have 15% of those tokens. So why the hell would I want to devalue the, the whole token amount <laughs> to end up with half of what I already own? It wouldn't make any sense. So I want to put that out there. Now, is there a lot of bad ideas out there? Of course there is. About nearly 50% of ICOs at launched didn't even have a business plan. The difference is you're not supposed to buy into all of them. You're supposed to do some validity, do some due diligence, do some basic research because there's a lot of things like fake people's teams on LinkedIn. And you can spot things like all the photos are exactly the same because they bought them. They're not even real people. But that's part of due diligence. This is why you get volatility. I mean, I bought... Um, I. I'm not going to say what I bought, but yesterday it was, uh, sorry, it's over the weekend because on Friday it was $2,000. Um, Saturday it dropped to 1400 and today it's worth 3300 That is an ICO that has just hit the market. What's happened is it's gone into the market. So it's got market value that's been set by the people behind it, what they value their tokens at. People on there have sold the tokens from things like the bounty program, etc. That cause causes the market to dip. And then you start seeing it level off and then you get people that start trading on the exchange that didn't know the business before, gone and researched it. And the price goes back up again. The reality is there is a lot of stuff out there. But here's another little thing for you. I work for Carillion. Now, I predominantly work as a contractor because I don't like corporations. I'm not a fan of most corporations because of the things they get up to and how they destroy smaller businesses and you end up with everything the same on every high street. I hate all that. I'm not a fan of everything being the same. I like a little bit of uh, individualism. Um, but I work for Carillion. Now, Carillion, the top guys on there, have literally stolen millions over years. There's a lot of corruption in there. Now they are a company that obviously had shares on the markets. They're a company that stole their pension funds. They're a company that has been involved in countless bits of corruption that will never hit the, the news media, in my personal opinion, because there's that many politicians and other people involved with other companies. The reality is, the whole system is corrupt. And this is why Bitcoin come out of 2009. It, it, there's actually a, a piece of information written into the code in 2009. There is only 21, 21 million Bitcoin. And you can tell by the block sizes that are being mined and the complexity of the next block will take years to crack. <clears throat> They'd have to, the amount of energy needed to actually get it to that level um, is why it's a limited supply. This is why Bitcoin will start going up because it is now limited. <clears throat> Prior to that, there is a lot of mining. Mining, 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 mining. Because everyone wants to get rich on the mining. But it's getting more and more complex. And as such, as soon as it starts becoming unviable to do so, a lot of miners will switch to something else. So that's one of the things I want to stress out there. 
it is a limited supply. It's 21 million of them. But there is not 21 million available. Lots of people have lost them. Lots of people um, sent them into the middle of nowhere by putting the wrong address and stuff in there. There's lots of money lost, the same as it falls out of your pocket. <clears throat> so the supply is actually less than 21 million. So Bitcoin itself is sort of like the grandfather coin, but it will remain going up in value for the medium to, sh well, short and medium term. Long term, who knows? Because it's like Ethereum. Ethereum added a smart contract which allowed for trans a different way of transacting. That just changed the way Bitcoin worked. You know, then the day Ethereum, as far as I'm aware, like nearly every crypto out there, has utilized the original Bitcoin code. So the point being is, you need to understand, <clears throat> the supply is limited. But it doesn't mean that somebody can come up with something new and revolutionize the whole thing. But at the same time, Bitcoin would take time to disappear even if that happened because it's utilized as the pairing on exchanges, it's utilized for going in and out of fiat, it's utilized in a lot of trading. And even then, you're looking at multiple versions of Bitcoin when the fork, you'll see there's like Bitcoin Cash, um, Bitcoin privacy, Bitcoin. There's, there's at least six different Bitcoins. And they've all come from the original. There's different versions of the original. And they all have value. They all have use. There's all people using them, buying them, trading them. Um, so the fun, that's the funny thing when people say, oh, they have no value. It's all speculation. It's all this. What isn't? And this is the whole point with the Securities Commission and others. Because when you sit there and say, well, it's not backed by gold. Well, neither is the dollar. It's not backed by any value. ICOs are starting to become backed by value. The reason it's easy to say that now is the ICOs only really took off in 2017. Which are businesses hitting the, the crypto market. It's been built on it. So it's easy to insult them and say that there's no value to them. They haven't developed yet. My own ICO will take at least seven months before the first um, dollar, euro, or whatever is actually being generated to pay back the return on investment. So the point being, it's easy to say mine, mine's a scam. It's a scam because they haven't generated any money yet. But the whole point is I have a business model. I have a business model that works. We sell these power plants as well. That's the, this is the joke in this, is the fact is most ICOs do not have what we have. We have a working business. We have a business where we sell the power plants to other people. The ICO is where we actually own the power plants for ourselves and our shareholders. And that's a word I can use as well because of the location that we're setting this up. I can use the word share because other companies aren't allowed because it becomes a security. It's not, no longer a utility in exchange for a service or whatever. It's a security which adds value. It has dividends. A lot of people can't say dividends. It's the same reason that airdrops come into things is to deal with how ICOs and stuff are getting shut down. But ultimately, I don't mind if people want to do their own thing. That's the whole point here. But you sit there and look at anything. It's very easy to criticize anything on the planet. It's the hard bit is actually seeing the future in everything or the demise of something because of its own. Um, let's say, let's just say the centralized banking system is the biggest parasite on this planet right now. That's realistically that it is. If it fails, taxpayers pay it. If it's successful, it takes profit. And if it fails and taxpayers can't pay the debt that is generated by the stuff that the banks create, they take your house. They take your money to pay for them to be profitable regardless. And that's why there's a shift. This is why you'll find a lot of negative stuff around crypto. It's not because the is crypto is bad, it's bad for them. It's stepping outside of their realms 
and actually changing the landscape. And that's what bothers them. They won't have any control over it. The, the whole central banking system is manipulating governments, is manipulating financial services, it's manipulating forex, it's manipulating trading. Um, you've got fake news and bots trading on the fake news, which is all controlled by central banking. Just something to think about. The thing with crypto is it does have manipulation, but at the same time, so does everything else. The volatility in the markets allow for profits to be gained. And I did see somebody yesterday complaining about um, swing and day trading um, because they're saying, oh, we should allow other people to come into the markets because you guys swing trading, day trading. Other people lose because you gain money. Do you know what? That's part and parcel of the draw. The other side of this being is nobody tells you to sell. This is the big thing where people go wrong. If you look at the crypto markets, they are all generally on the up unless it's a really bad idea. A lot of it is speculation. A lot of it is market growth. But ultimately, the whole thing is moving in a positive way. After about two, three years, a lot of that will drop. You'll start seeing regulations more. You'll start seeing um, crackdowns on things that governments don't want or they'll be trying to shut them down. They'll be, I'll tell you what, it's like oil and water. It'll just keep moving around, but they will try and control it. The central banking system does not want to own crypto. It wants to destroy it. It's not interested in changing its system. This is why things like Ripple may actually work with a lot of the banks, but at the end of the day, as I've said to people before, within Ripple, Ripple is the business. XRP is the currency on it. Ripple own what's called X Current and X Rapid. X Rapid is ideal for remittance companies and that uses XRP. X Current is what the banks use that doesn't need XRP. It doesn't need them at all. And that, why do you think they use that? Because they don't need to hold any of the tokens. That's banking. They're not embracing it. They're not wanting this revolutionary, revolutionary technology unless they can control it. This is why Goldman Sachs is investing in its own blockchain. There's an internal thing that they'll roll out with other banking they work with. Even though Ripple has already developed a tech that they could use. That's banking for you. That's like you having the best idea possible and walking into the bank and then realistically telling you the truth that they don't want your idea unless they can steal the patent or whatever. Because Goldman Sachs obviously filed for a patent. Um, they would rather go away and make something exactly the same and patent it to compete against you than use your technology. And that, that is central banking. That's how they work. That's how they operate. If you look at uh, SWIFT, SWIFT, I think, was formed in 1973-74. Look how obsolete and old that is. But it's a cooperative between the banks. The interchanging banking transaction system is controlled by the banks. Just a few things to look at. And the thing is, you can keep down on this path. And I'll be honest with you, from a political point of view, um, you could end up with everything being owned by the banks or corporations in the near future because of the way the systems are set up. When you go for a government contract, they start giving it directly to the banks. Or whatever. Look at Carillion. Carillion. Carillion is perfect for this. Carillion is the best example of this. Going bankrupt the f and announced to the, the markets is going bust. Following day, it wins a rail contract worth over a billion dollars. Uh, well, over a billion dollars. Now, it wins a government contract the day after it's on the verge of collapse. The day after. I'm not being funny. If your builder was coming to start a building project on a new house, and he says, oh, I might not be here tomorrow because we're shutting down, you know, we've run out of money, repossessing all the cars or whatever. Wouldn't you be a bit concerned about saying, are you going to finish building my house? Because your first concern is, hang on, I don't want to give you my deposit because 
it's going to get swallowed up by the banking. Just a thought. Thanks for watching.